a magnificent scene up here at the back of football park looking across the Adelaide Plains the turf in magnificent condition 50,000 people plus the blue and red balloons of Nord have just hit the airport Adelaide's black and white ones have gone and for the benefit of interstate viewers that is the Port Adelaide side white shorts with black and white stripes on their Guernseys and the Norwood side better known as the red legs in South Australia their red socks with the blue and the red trim an introduction to our comment maker for the afternoon former Glenelg and state captain Peter Marker as we see an aerial shot of football park Peter Marker a magnificent sight tremendous in uh, tremendous indeed and uh, that point about the toss I'd say the breeze would be worth anything up to six goals at the moment the red legs have won the toss but of course they've got to use it they haven't started well in the last three finals matches but if they can today use the win in the first quarter they're in with a big chance the other commentator this afternoon on nine going live throughout Australia former Western Australian Ian Aitken Ian a wonderful sight oh, it's magnificent isn't it uh, Daisy I, I uh, I'm always thrilled when going into grand finals that that of course is the climax of the season and it really is a beautiful spectacle here at Football Park it's a magnificent arena and I uh, confirm your thoughts that the the turf the, is in absolute excellent condition a little disappointing perhaps about the breeze because it is favoring one end and uh, the, the side that wins a toss can win the game of course but Port Adelaide are a champion side they've only lost two games this year and it'll be a magnificent spectacle Peter Marker is a player of only recent times uh, when a breeze like this is blowing at football park it can be very difficult to score goals from the pockets perhaps you just like to enlarge well it's, it's almost impossible in fact Ian, particularly up at the northern end and the wind in fact is favoring the south favoring the southern end uh, in the pockets it's very very difficult and uh, uh, similarly at Waverley in uh, in Melbourne you get uh, right deep in those pockets it's pretty hard to score particularly if, if you've got a breeze but um, I don't know uh, for interstate viewers this Port Adelaide side is possibly one of the best uh, football teams to play in South Australia since the war uh, many fine judges are saying that and uh, if they play anything up to their ability today they should win well Port Adelaide once again for the benefit of all concerned throughout the season have lost only two games and drawn one whereas Norwood made a dramatic turn at the end of the minor round to win eight of their last nine games and so get into the final five and they have won their way into the grand final by some tremendous finals football and uh, Peter Marker Neil Curley said maybe if the heat gets to around 26 27 degrees as expected this will help them in that last quarter yeah I think so I, I think when elements come into it uh, that happens and uh, there's the red leg coach former Richmond player Neil Baum and uh, what a fantastic effort 28 years of age came here from uh, from Richmond last year Norwood were gone midway during the season and suddenly they've won nine out of ten games and they're in the grand final amazing an interesting little sidelight of course Neil Baum playing for Richmond used to be coached by Tom Hafey who Collingwood team went down in the VFL grand final and Tom rang Neil during the week and said well look just because we did it the hard way to get into the grand final these are the pitfalls that we fell into I hope your team doesn't do the same things and gave him some help and as I understand Tom Hafey is a very popular figure with anyone who's ever been under his command sure Pe is Peter who have you tipped to win I I've tipped Port Adelaide in uh, for sure because the shining lights are there Tim Evans 144 goals this year incredible effort uh, Russell Ebert North Melbourne player of last year former Gary medals a tremendous effort uh, Greg Phillips at centre half back I think he'll be too strong for for the veteran John Wynn uh, they've got strong points all over the field and uh, I think Port Adelaide will win it whilst we're on those umpires the two umpires in charge Peter Mead and Des Foster Des Foster the smaller of the two is umpiring his third grand final Peter Mead on the left of your screen has umpired five grand finals so certainly experienced Ian Aitken quickly before the game starts your selection I, I feel that a bit like Peter that uh, Port Adelaide uh, should win it this afternoon they've proved themselves to be the best side in the competition in 1980 and they've carried everything before them they're going for their 21st uh, premiership victory but Norwood of course have uh, proven themselves in final rounds and whenever they get there the traditional Norwood comes out but I just think that Port Adelaide will are just going to win in a very very tight game I reckon it'll only be a kick at the end of the match well that makes it three I'll go for Port Adelaide but that doesn't mean that Norwood hasn't got a chance and we're just standing by now for the national anthem. Mm -hmm. 
John Cale, the Port Adelaide coach. Adelaide in the black and white. The 1980 Grand Final, Norwood versus Port Adelaide, your commentator Ian Aitken. Nat and Dell at six foot four versus six three and a half. In Nat at six four and a half, and the whistle is gone, and another bounce down will take place under the guidance of umpire Des Foster. Nat again coming in. Dalwood. Umpire Foster picks out a free kick. The first kick will go the way of Norwood. And it'll be taken by Grant Dell, the big ruckman. Down towards a half forward flank goes the kick, and there's a good strong mark taken in defence by the best centre half back player in South Australia. And a magnificent player too, and uh, sought very keenly by Collingwood in uh, Victoria. Phillips it is, the boots out towards centre wing, taken by Williams. Williams steadying himself, kicks into the breeze, look at them hold it up. Knocked off hands. Taken very nicely here by Winter. Winter goes towards centre half forward. Phillips getting underneath the ball and takes yet another mark. Greg Phillips from centre half back goes looking for Boyd, almost intercepted by Aish. The running player is Eckerman down the outer side, but he's going for Kinnear. Port Adelaide wingman, well clear. Kinnear, long handball out to Captain Cunningham. He's going to run into trouble through Stemper. Pushes out the, par the bump. Clifford comes in for an illegal tackle. And Frank Stemper, the half-back flanker for the Red Legs, will take a free kick. Good strong work by Stemper, and uh, his final form has been superb. Stemper's kick, looking for Turbel, the diminutive rover. At the back, Michael Ace on the half-back one at the moment. Turbel, Norwood building, can't get clear. Quickly in now is Wren, looking to pass off. Gallagher, under pressure. Smothered the ball, Turbel, can't get clear. The body's going in hard in the grand final, and a free kick has been picked up for Port Adelaide. And will be taken out on the other side by Greg Boyd. And Turbo swung his fist a little bit too high there and uh, the umpire's were right on it. That's Kimmy Kinnear. Kinnear's kicked down towards the half forward looking for a Brian Cunningham, finds a little rover. The captain of Port Adelaide slips it across towards centre half forward. Williams is over there, he gathers it in but he offends with uh, Gallagher and Gallagher will take the free kick from centre half back. Two brilliant uh, centre men and Gallagher. Gallagher to Taylor, Taylor down towards centre half forward. And yet again, Phillips takes a mark. That's his third mark, third kick, and we've only been operating for two minutes into the first quarter here at Football Park. Nicholson boots it clear down towards the centre wing. Bouncing towards the line. It's awfully close. I think it's out. Johnny Wynn is uh, playing most of his uh, football down near the centre line. He's going to have to stand Greg Phillips, otherwise he'll murder Nord. At the throw-in, Nat front posse. Looking out there for Hannon, can't keep the ball in play. And once more, it's out of bounds on the half-forward right flank of Norwood. No score in the 1980 Grand Final, played almost three minutes. At the throw-in, Nat gets the tap away. Aerial ping-pong at the moment. Cunningham on the half-back line, seeks the help of Hoffman. Inside the half-back line, does it well. Dispatches the ball back towards midfield. The big men fly, and in the middle of the pack, it's Winger of Norwood who takes the mark. Bruce Winter put the legs into attack, goes towards the half forward line. Turbo in there, can't bring it down. Michael Taylor, even in defence, does it well. And the four times McGarry medalist pushes out the pass to the half forward line. But a fine mark, not paid to Nicholson. Called to play on. Tail gives chase around the corner. Walker can't handle the situation. The big fella butters up again. Quickly in there now is uh, Hoffner with his head ducked. And the umpire will come in and bounce the ball the outer side of football park still no score three and a half minutes into the first quarter the grand final coming to you live from channel nine dalwood up there taken away by boyd the brilliant boyd boots down towards the forward puck finds for it's been port adelaide doing most of the attacking so far in the first quarter this is one of those difficult angles uh in aiken very difficult to kick a goal from here the port adelaide start has been magnificent against the win we're four minutes in, Nord haven't scored, and Port through Philetic, having first shot for goal. Land Philetic. He is only 25 metres out. 
The kick is on its way. It's going to be the first score, but it's a minor score. One behind to Port Adelaide, their first to score. Norwood yet to register a thing. The movement down to Philadelphia was uh, was very good. The foot passing from the Port Adelaide side, the disposal generally is very good. Stazanowski, a big job this afternoon, has to stand Tim Evans, the star Port Adelaide full forward, 144 goals for a season, a record in South Australia at the back of the pack. It's Aegis. Jack sides a punt kick high towards the half forward line. They set themselves, can't bring it down. In there is Taylor. He can't get the ball out. Till over the top of the ball, and the umpire will come in and bounce. On the half forward line of Port Adelaide, Nat and Dow. Boyd got a kick of sorts away, but it's Turbo who boots it back midfield. Good top. Takes it. Looking for a lead, he gets one from Adler. Changed his mind. It's on now from Walker. The big fella's going to leap. One grab, can't complete it. Right there with him, Brad Moore. Brad Moore hasn't got the ball, and the free kick will go to the Port Adelaide defender. That's one that uh, Nick Walker should have taken. Possessions are very hard in grand finals. He'll, uh, he'll regret that one. Brad Moore wobbles one to midfield. Turbul illegal Shepherd. No, he's been paid the mark. Plays onto the half forward line, looking for win. And the Norwood strongman takes the mark about 50 metres out. And with the breeze at his back, should score, but he's going in short, too far for Gallagher. Gallagher's got to go chase it in the pocket, he won't get there. And a poor pass from the Norwood player finds the ball out of bounds in the full forward left pocket. There's a shot of the crowd, 50,000 plus here at Football Park, a magnificent spectacle. The ball is in the forward pocket, it's clear now. Benjamin has a snap at the goal. A little bit of indecision there at centre half forward. The umpire has now waved it. That's the first goal up for Norwood. One goal, Port Adelaide, one behind. Magnificent work, Albie Menzel. From memory, he kicked the first goal last week against Sturt when uh, the Red Legs defeated the Blues. Gary Menzel and Turbel, prolific goal kickers, and uh, Norwood relying on them today. Back to centre bounce. Nat and Dowood. Dowood gets the thump away. Back towards Gallagher to the half forward line. Coming to meet it. Hannon gets a bad bounce. Phillips has got to go back and get it. Woodcock there with him. But the Port Adelaide centre half back does it well as he drives the ball towards the centre wing position. But it goes out of play on the full. And the penalty free kick will go the way of Norwood wingman Keith Thomas. Thomas, the attack side of centre wing, pushes out a pass to Turbel too far. Kale in defence for Port Adelaide. Seeks Williams and does it well. Williams, check side of the centre circle, almost at centre half back. The kick is not a good one, standing up in the breeze. In there is Thomas, Boyd over the top. With him for Port Adelaide is Abernethy. But in goes Taylor of Norwood, pushing him to the half forward line. Fisted away from Turbul, Hannon back. We've got Hannon in trouble, needs back up support. Tries to get it out, Brad Moore through. Adler snaps, good run through. The bounce is not going to favour him, goes the other way and trickles through for a point. At the eight-minute mark, Norwood 1-1, Port Adelaide 1 point. Trevor Sorrell now to bring the ball back into play. A very experienced fullback is Trevor Sorrell. A short kick away is quite good, precise football. Finds Darrell Kale wearing the number two Guernsey, as he has done over years with great distinction. But on this occasion, a lot of the copybook, and it goes out of play. And probably one of the most exciting footballers in Australian football at the moment is Michael Aish, kicking it in towards the centre full forward position. Off hands it goes. Woodcock having a look at the goals. He doesn't miss those, and he hasn't missed that one. One goal. That's Norwood second. Two goals, one. Caught one behind. He correctly called in Aiken. He doesn't miss those. I think most of the many hundred goals he's kicked in his career, Roger Woodcock, have been on that left foot uh, in classic movements like that. Superbly done. Norwood is 2-1, doing well at the moment. Port Adelaide, one point. The breeze worth three to four goals, very gusty, making conditions a little difficult. Norwood coach, Neil Barr. At the bounce, still Matt and Dell. Nat coming in check side, thumps the ball to Hoffner. Phillips, and a half back, hooks around the corner. It's all Norwood. Nicholson runs a dead heat, but he rode the bump well. Lifts it out now, Teal, Menzel, Norwood build again, Thomas runs him into trouble, Port Adelaide with a chance to clear through Ebert, can't pick it up, 
Quickly now, it's Jenkins. Palmer, smothered beautifully by Abernethy. Phillips in the action again at the bottom of the packs. Big into the danger, and that will be a Norwood free. Make a few mistakes, Port Adelaide. They're a little bit flustered. They haven't played for two weeks, and uh, they would have expended a lot of nervous energy in that time. And Norwood, match hardened, finals hardened. They're doing a good job. Started slowly, but at nine minutes in, Norwood are two goals up. Former Western Australian, John Wynn, 31 years of age, puts it in offline. Port Adelaide goes for the defence and forces the ball out of play in the full forward right pocket of North. Nearly 10 minutes have gone in the grand final. Right full forward pocket. Nat is in their number eight. Number 38 for Norwood is Walker. Nat takes it, but looks as though he could have offended. And Mick Walker, the youngster, will get the free kick. Number 38. He's only 21 years of age. Got his opportunity in the preliminary final when Hugo Colasanti was badly injured in a work accident. And now we have a look at the big six foot three youngster coming in for his first shot at goals. And it's a beauty. No problems with the nervousness there. Three goals, one for Norwood. The first to Walker and Port Adelaide one behind. What a start. What a start for the Redlegs. Three goals up. 10 minutes in and there's number 38 Nick Walker got his chances in Aiken set a couple of weeks ago and he's gone from strength to strength that was a pressure goal he had to kick it and kick it he did Norwood doing it well Dowood and Nat still in ruck done the whole 11 minutes line ball at the bounce Cunningham the Port Adelaide skipper meets win head on Port Adelaide can't get it clear it's Taylor that comes out with it the half forward line Bradmore getting back on it in the back pocket. Hooked back towards the half-back line. Phillips there. Can't keep the ball in play. Port Adelaide only been into attack on two occasions. They managed the point on one occasion. A little bit of uh, fisticuffs going on behind the play. Brought the crowd to life a little bit. Nat to Cunningham. Blindly around the corner. Winter can't make it. Chance for Abernethy. Kicks to the half-forward line. Port Adelaide with a chance now. Darrell Cale still outside the half forward line. Folletta gives the lead. Too fast for Till. A beautiful pass. Pinpoints that player inside the half forward line. Still too far out to score. Evans in the square. Stasenowski with him. Up over the top. Evans can't bring it down. Stasenowski first his way clear. Gallagher in support. Rides the ball back midfield. Coming to meet it. Phillips. Pass Dates. Cunningham needs support. Gets it now for the running Hoffner. Dashes into attack, kicks in long, coming in short, fisted away now beautifully by Norwood. Williams goes in, grabbed high, and the umpire will rule a bounce ball on the half-forward line for the Magpies. Crowd's a little bit quiet in, day. I, I think they're uh, a little bit apprehensive about Port Adelaide's chances because Norwood have started extremely well and Port, the professionals, are making a few errors. Bounced down, that goes in there, got the palm, a good one, but it's Thomas there. Slipped over the shoulder by Dazzling Darrell Cale, but marked back by Winter. Former Sturt footballer, played for the state, and is now playing for Lord. Down towards centre half forward, Phillips underneath it. And very close to being the best man on the ground. This will be his sixth kick on the way. Started sensationally at centre half back as big Greg Phillips. Out to Kim Kinnear. Kinnear centre win. Port Adelaide at the moment, just slowing it down a little bit. Looking towards Ebert, Stemper, judge that perfectly. Well done, Frank Stemper. Short little kick forward to Aish, and Aish has got possession. Immediately he plays on to Taylor. Michael Taylor, the captain. Look at the kick, it's gone 80 metres, up towards the goals. Woodcock and Hannon. Hannon very, very happy to just force that through for a minus goal. What a huge kick. Trevor Song. Very warm conditions in Adelaide this afternoon. 26 degrees. Thomas, Nat, Mark Williams deep in defence. His immediate opponent, Gallagher, there with him, but can't keep the ball in play. Throw in inside the half forward. 3-2 Norwood, a point Port Adelaide. Played almost 14 minutes. Walker at the back, Nat in front. Woodcock can't control it. Williams, Abernethy, the Port youngster. Brilliant football, 18 years of age. Going to run himself into trouble. Kicks around the corner and an FAD, or has he been ruled out of play? No, an FAD will go to Port Adelaide free after disposal. And there's a Norwood player down, Peter Market. Can you see who it is? I 
couldn't pick it up in, but uh, it looks Michael like Ace. Michael Ace. And if he's in trouble, I would say Nord are in trouble. The three players, three Nord players went for Abernethy then, and uh, I think Michael Ace may have hit a camera. Daryl Kale, the pass to Poletic, but he's edged out Jim Till, and his opponent will get the free kick for pushing the back on the half back line. Gee, that'll be a blow for Norwood. He's been there shining light in the forward division in the final series. Not a good effort. Doward back to Teal. Puts the teammate under pressure. Williams. Turbull. Back to Thomas. Thomas a long kick inside the half forward line. Brad Walker can't make it. Walker will need backup support. The big ball blocks the ball and he's gone. Trevor Sorrell, the Port Adelaide full back, whizzes it out of defence. Goes across looking for Stephen Clifford. Finds that player. Good support there by Sorrell. Sorrell kicks it out towards Kania. Kania will take the mark. He's supported here by Ivan Eckerman. He changes his mind as uh, Kania kicks down towards Boyd. Pressurised by Winter, that's good football. Stemper comes across to lend a hand towards a half forward flank. Stemper still with retarded. Umpire Mead changed his mind and is now going to pick out a free kick. And it looks as though it's going to be taken by Winter. Fourth kick coming up for Bruce Winter. That's a good start. Low trajectory kick forward. 15 metre penalty imposed, so the kick will go back. And Bruce Winter, Michael Taylor, it is number 29, has got the ball, but now it goes back to Winter. He's played in a variety of positions with Bruce Winter. Full back, centre half forward, full forward. This afternoon he's in a back pocket. A short kick from Arbor over towards Dalby. Dalwood's kick down towards the full forward position goes the kick. Umpire Foster allows the mark and he plays on very quickly. Does Nat gets it across to brilliant Bruce Abernethy. On to Clifford, who's had a magnificent season. Taken by Cunningham, who's close to the boundary line. Keeps it in play. Now the run is on for Jim Tool. The big fella's got possession of the ball. Very important player for Norwood. Over towards centre, Michael Tucker. Run down brilliantly by Boyd, but still gets the kick away towards Ace. Coming in strongly, sorry. Slips it over now. Kinnear. Phillips gets a bad bounce. Comes back to him. Still can't get it right. Kinnear again. Find support from that player. And the leader's on from Russell Lee. Back to Kinnear in the 1-2. Over the half-forward line. Port Adelaide build it well. Evan sets in Port Adelaide champion has taken the mark, 30 metres out, and their first real chance at goal. Evans' first kick. Kicking into this very strong breeze, whipping in across the lakes. Tim Evans, head on. Port Adelaide would like a steadier right now. The kick underway, and the umpire says Port Adelaide has scored. Their first on the board has taken them 17 and a half minutes in the 1980 Grand Final. Port Adelaide 1-1. Trail Norwood 3 2. Norwood 3 2, Port Adelaide 1 1. Tim Evans, goal number 145 for this season, 1980 in South Australia. Umpire Foster gets the play underway again. Nat guts the palm. Ace seems to be okay. Michael Taylor has possession of the ball, but it's umpire Foster to bounce again. 18 minutes into the first quarter of the 1980 Grand Final. Clifford behind there. Hoffner's in there as well. Got it out to Williams. Terrific footballer is Williams down towards centre half forward. Ages, clever football. Clifford down towards Valentic. Stetson has to be called in the middle. Oh, didn't they go? Umpire Foster lets it go on. Gallagher, long way, roaming far wide this afternoon to get kicks. Jim Teal over there to support him. Ace, ages it was, and now it will be Gallagher kicking the ball to him. Centre win. Oh, well done, Matt. Centre half forward looking for Cunningham. Excellent mark taken by Stemper. Stemper immediately bolts off, kicks long to the outer side, looking there for Ace. Hoffner's got him covered, but he can't mark the ball. 
Phillips back in defence for the Magpies. Chips out a short pass towards centre wing, ill directed. Taylor just possessed. Hofner taps it over to the running Kinnear. Kinnear short to the half forward line. Looking for Evert. Can't get there. Gallagher back in defence. And the ball goes out of bounds on the half forward right flank for the Magpies. Port Adelaide starting to get a bit of momentum. A couple of movements forward, but Nord still playing well. On the half forward line, Boyd winds his way through, looking for Evans. Going past that path, Valetic can't hold it. Stazanowski for the legs. Tries to crash his way through. The tackle is high, the tackle is clumsy. And Valetic has given away a free kick to the Norwood custodian, Ian Stazanowski. Stazanowski played with back problems in the latter part of his career. Could be playing his last game for the legs, 29 years of age. Foots it to the half back line. The leap's on, Williams up, can't bring it down. Ebert working the ball well, wants back up support, gets it from Boyd, 30 metres out, hooks round the corner, floating in towards full forward, Evans, Stasinowski, two on one, Stasinowski, Evans, nowhere to go, turbo the tackler, Fanatic through, but a free kick. All the players getting a little bit tense. That's Turbo, he's nuts. <laughs> You've got to be nuts to do that, you know, that, that height versus uh, Evans. Turbo's free kick, short to Stemper at centre half back. Stemper's got it. Out towards a half back flank and finds David Arn. Eckerman underneath it. Taken by Menzel. Albie Menzel, close to the boundary line, goes his kick. And in actual fact, it is out of play. Right full forward pocket, a very quick transference of play, and as Peter Marker has told you, Port Adelaide have steadied in the last five minutes. Taken by John Wynn to Woodcock. Is this his second? It doesn't curl back. It goes up, and it may well have gone through. No, it hasn't. Touched by the hands and one behind. So that's Norwood's third behind. Three goals, three, Port Adelaide 1-1, 21 versus 7. Neil Baum can manage a smile at the moment. Would have been a freak goal, almost bounced back through. Williams on the half-back line, supported by Kinnear, who's well balanced. Wants to run it out of defence. He gets the run now from Phillips. He's at centre half-back. Ebert trying to draw the player. Ebert's there now. Port Adelaide with method. Building beautifully. Evans is on the lead. But Ebert has had three bounces. He's going for home with a long kick in towards full ball. Phillips and uh, Johnny Wynn just couldn't make the yards to get to him. He's a magnificent player, Phillips. He would cost every bit of 150,000 on the market if you could get him. Over to Ebert. What a player Ebert is. Superb movement through the goals. They're hard to kick from there. 2 1 Port Adelaide, 3 3 0. Centre bounce down again. Sticks Dolan's on the ground now for Port Adelaide, the big fella. Gets his first kick down towards centre half forward. Pick a play, big pack of players up there. Oh, beautiful football by Abernethy and Porter looking at the champion side at the moment. Stasinowski, well played. Peter Marker has told you that Stasinowski's record is excellence against Evans and he's performing credibly this afternoon. And that's a good kick over to the former Woodville footballer in Frank Stemper. That's Frank's fifth kick. A short one to Turbull. Thought about what he was going to do before he took the mark. Off hands and out of play. Left half back flank. Dolan versus Walker. Walker it was that got the puck. Right full forward pocket. Evans up there, couldn't take it. There's two flying against Evans when he goes up there. Williams has got it. Now it's Michael Taylor. Michael Taylor on to Jim Teal. The big centre half back from Norwood boots forward. Eckerman couldn't take it. The opportunity for Hannon. Hannon playing in only his second game of the season. Took far too long. He may well get out of it. Phillips. Phillips rode his opponent into the ground and John Wynn will take the free kick. A short kick over to Turbull. Turbull has taken the mark. And Turbull should kick a goal from there. Norwood Rovers in Aiken are very dangerous. Kicked seven goals last week, four to Menzel and three to Turbull. Menzel, as we've seen, has already got one. And Turbull is certainly within... Peter Marcus told you he's missed a lot, but he hasn't missed a goal. That was his fourth kick, his first goal. Four goals, three to two goals, one. The Red 
legs on top. It's a vital one for the red legs too because Port Adelaide had steadied. There's Greg Turgle, the Turbel, the, uh, the goal kicker. Port had steadied. Norwood needed one. We're nearly 25 minutes in the first quarter. Norwood 4-3, Port 2-1. At the centre bounce, Walker against Dole. Walker's tap. The captain, Taylor, gets out of it well. Hooks to the half-forward line. Woodcock looking for the good bounce. Supported now by Turbel, but it's Eckerman who comes over the top. Forces the ball to Bradmore. Does it well inside the half-back line and wobbles one back to Bruce Abernethy, the Port Adelaide wingman, who's come down from that position to take the mark on the half-back line. Dispatches it towards centre wing. Teal. Valetic. Does it beautifully at centre wing. Puts Port Adelaide into attack. High to the half-forward line. Aegis and Armour step it back in support. Boots the ball long to the half-forward line. Daryl Cale gets hit high. Gallagher in there. Can't pick it up. Abernethy smothered off the boot and uh, out of bounds on the full. Came off the boot of the opposing Norwood player and will be a Port Adelaide free kick. Umpire Peter Mead not happy about that. A brief discussion with the central umpire. And uh, umpire Mead has ruled that Abernethy free kick half back flat. The boundary umpire was an actual fact, Ian, that uh, indicated that the kick from Abernethy goes over behind the pack taken by Boyd. He's a an elusive footballer, on to Williams, Williams running in, over goes the hand pass to Evans, Evans having a look at the goals, trying to screw it back, up there is Aegis, can't take the mark, but can he kick the goal, because he's got the crown, and he has, oh beautiful goal off the ball, he didn't want the Aegis, his first has been flattened as well, and that's Port Adelaide's third, 4-3, Port Adelaide 3-1, and Port have got the strength at the moment, Peter Marker, Sure, how the Aiken and uh, Ross Aegis went down, but he's a hungry forward, Ross Aegis. He's kicked well over 60 goals this year. And watch him go around the corner. He loves these. And that's not easy to do. Well done, Ross Aegis. That's three to Port. Port of 3 1, Norwood 4 3. Back live, Walker's tap away. Ebert for Port Adelaide. Kinnear at centre wing. The Magpies into attack again, a long one. Getting underneath it will be Armour and takes the defensive mark. Immediately plays on, rebounds strongly to the half-back line and kicks long, searching for ace. Hasn't been able to get into the game strongly yet. Slips it over to Captain Michael Taylor, but his kick under pressure is not good. And Kale takes it in defence. It appears that the Port Adelaide Rover is playing a loose man in defence, kicking into this breeze. His thick kick goes to the half-forward line. Cunningham couldn't get it. Forced out now to Ebert. Ebert to the lead of uh, looking for a teammate in Clifford. But the free kick will go the way of Norwich Frank Stemper. Playing pretty well here. He's uh, done a good job on, on Russell Ebert. And uh, this is kick number seven for Frank Stemper. And quite a useful kick too as it covers about 45 metres. Behind the pack is Kinnear. Quickly gets it over to Ebert. Four times McGarry medalist finds Stephen Ronald Clifford. Clifford's kicked right up towards the square. Evans for Lettick. And there's Stasinowski. Caught to the ground immediately. Knocked it clear. Abernethy. The brilliance of Bruce Abernethy. But tackles superbly. Teal is over there. Boyd is tackling. But Jim Teal to take the free kick. Over to Thomas. Thomas rubbers it clear. Down to Woodcock. Well done, Roger Woodcock. And Thomas supports him excellently. A lovely kick towards Ace. Oh, excellent mark. Well done, Michael Ace. He's only lightly built. He's only about 11 stone 7. And he's only 6 foot. Off hands. Darrell Kale. He plays that defensive position to perfection. To Kinnear. Jenkins, a form footballer. Couldn't hold Kinnear on that occasion. And Kinnear just propping it towards the line. Michael Taylor is there. The skipper of Norwood boots towards centre-half forward and finds Adler. Adler some 65 metres out from goals. Into the time on period by four minutes. 27 to 19. Peter Marker has told you that Norwood are kicking with the use of a six-goal breeze. Adler's kick will go awfully close, but marking it back there is a good strong mark taken by Bradmore. Ian Bradmore. 
is quite content to take plenty of time. Kicks it high. And the mark is going to be awarded and paid to Sticks Dolan. A former Norwood footballer himself is Dolan. Of the siren of the grand final, the scoreboard reads Norwood, four goals, three, Port Adelaide, three goals, one. Held them up time and time again. So umpire Mead is just about to recommence the game here in the 1980 grand final and your commentator is Ian Day. Nat joined by Dalwood. Nat gets the thump away to the half forward line. Stemper under pressure but gets the kick away. Woodcock underneath the ball, can't bring it down. Ackerman back in defence, he'll need support. Slips it over now to Hannon, smothered well by Wynn. Players go in hard. We've got a bit of a yike behind play. Players just getting a little teasy. Johnny the Wynn. final nerves take over. Yeah, you wouldn't believe Johnny Wynn's involved. He and Ackerman uh, got involved, and then big Greg Phillips ran in. That's Greg Phillips shaping up to John Wynn. Back where the action is, it's Woodcock. The half-forward flanker for the legs to put them into attack. Floats one in towards Adler, can't bring it down. Sorotsky having his first run for the afternoon in the interchange. Players stack up over the top of the ball. And umpire Peter Mead in his fifth grand final comes in for the bounce. A bounce about 30 metres out from the Port Adelaide goal. Nat, high up, straight to Turbul, can't get it clear. Arms and legs everywhere and once more a bounce. What would be the instructions by Neil Barm, do you think, Peter Marker? Oh, certainly to, to, uh, to run the ball into attack in because goals can be scored. Eckerman across there, taken by Woodcock. Hoffner appeared to push an opponent in the back and it was Michael Aish. And the brilliant youngster will take the free kick from only 35 metres from goals. So Michael Aish, at the eight, tender age of 19, playing in his 34th game, has got the opportunity to kick a goal against the wind that was his fourth kick and i don't know whether it's got the distance it's come off hands anyway and through for a minor score so norwood get the first minor score of the game in the second quarter that must have only just missed by inches and uh, michael Ace only 19 and he's already played in five finals matches and bruce abernethy for port adelaide he's 18 and this is his second grand final also indicative peter of the strength of the breeze sorrel kicks one 60 meters phillips furthers it Stemper comes to meet it well, going to be run down brilliantly by Boyd at centre wing. The Maggie's in trouble, Cunningham down at the bottom of the pack. In they go hard, Stemper. Winter at the back, 21 is Williams, 17 Turbul, 26 Stemper. Umpire Foster in for the bounce. Midway between wing and centre. The bounce down, Dowwood. Nat try to hook it back to Cunningham. Now he tries to get it out to Williams. Thomas goes in hard. Abernethy to Williams is good football. Port Adelaide into attack again. Getting back in defence is Winter. The running player is Nicholson, but Winter doesn't want him. Smothered off the boot. Here's a chance for Port Adelaide. The brilliant Boyd inside the half forward line. On the lead is Evans. Can't quite scoop it up. I think he's no ball to play on. Evans claiming the mark. He took it low down to the turf, Peter Mark. Well, no point arguing in. When the umpire makes his decision, that's the end of it. So Norwood got the chance now to go a little bit further away from home. Keith Thomas it is for the Norwood wingman to kick it down to where he should be playing. Behind the pack is Phillips, the whistle is gone, and the free kick goes to the big crowd. That's Johnny Cale in towards the centre position. Taylor. His kick towards centre half four. Eckerman and Menzel. Menzel takes the mark. Plays on immediately. Poops it down ground. Sorotsky there. So is Ace. And Ace takes a fantastic mark. That knock hasn't seemed to have hurt him that he picked up in the first quarter. I think it did more damage to the camera. Watch number eight. Only 11 stone of him, and that's Captain Courageous. There were players everywhere, and uh, Paul Adler was number 16, almost took his head off. What an important shot for goal this one is. The kick is going to go through, all right. That's his first. And that's Norwood's fifth. If 
jumped away at the four minute mark. They're 5 4 and caught a 3 1. And look at Neil Barn. I don't know whether he's smiling uh, or he's in pain. One of the two. There's Gary Menzel who got away from uh, Eckerman. And the ball was held up long enough for Michael Ace to judge it beautifully. Of course, it's history now. He kicked the goal and Nord have replied. They're certainly not going to be run over today. 5-4 Norwood, Port Adelaide 3-1. Tremendous intestinal fortitude there by the youngster. The handball wasn't good to Abernethy from Matt. The big fellow's got to go get it again. But in the meantime, Abernethy's won a free kick. The check side off centre wing, plus 15 metres. Brings him to centre wing. The kick is not a good one. He sticks. Jenkins back for the red legs. Slips over the handball now. Turbull. The running player is Taylor. A long one to the half forward line coming to meet it is Ackerman. And the Port Adelaide back pocket player takes it at centre half back. Philetic is clear at centre wing. That's the way the ball will go. Centres the ball to the half forward line. Aegis, unopposed, takes the mark. He can almost make the distance. He's not confident, undecided. He had two leads, fractionally close to goal, but is elected to have a shot at the woodwork. Aegis' kick is a drop punch, going to be short. Evans over the top, can't bring it down. Clifford can't do it, Stasinowski going well. Puts it back towards the half-forward line. But there it is, Cunningham, who takes the mark. And he's marginally closer than Cunningham was before, uh, than uh, Aegis was before. Brian Cunningham, 50 metres out from goal. Port Adelaide captain is not going to get the distance either. Fisted away, back towards Turbull. Ebert there as well. The bump, Aegis around the corner, going in high, going to be close. Stasinowski back, still in play. Winter goes for the safety of the line, but the umpire rules that the ball has gone across the line for a minor score. A point to Port Adelaide. The worried face of coach John Cale. As Bruce Winter brings the ball back into play towards a half back flank. Jenkins, a magnificent marker, one so short. Let's have a look at that again as Danny Jenkins over the top. He does this consistently. He's only five foot ten, but he takes magnificent marks. Here we are live again as Nat takes the mark. Centre wing. The big fella. Six four and a half. Fourteen seven. Fisted away by Teal. Now it's Kinnear. Supported by Williams. Williams changes his direction. Kicks it towards the square. Evans in front, and the brilliance of Nicholson will relieve. Nicholson's kick. Abernethy sees the ball bounce up in the air. Thomas it was that went at him. Darrell Kale appeared to be pushed to the back. Not so, says the umpire, and it's now Roger Woodcock. The pressure is on that player. He's got nowhere to go, and he comes back under that left foot beautifully. Eckerman and win. Win interfered with Eckerman, and Ivan Eckerman will get his second kick for the game of the grand final. Eckerman from midfield, high to the half forward line. It's all Norwood back there, and the mark is taken by Danny Jenkins. Thought about running it over to skipper Michael Taylor, but in turn goes for Jim Teal. A long kick to the half forward line. Coming to meet up Bradmore. Adler at the back of the pack. Looks for support. Gets it. Sorotsky. In trouble, the handball is a shocker. Tony Hannon around the corner finds Bradmore. Almost has his head put off. It's Trevor Sowell, the player. Gets the free kick, plus 15 metres. And a Norwood player down behind play is Gallagher. Gallagher. Bad news for the legs, but the action on Sowell. Sowell's long kick penetrates the half forward line. Ages at the back of the pack, as is Doward. Philetic tackles and ruled a high tackle and it's the Norwood skipper from uh, Ruckman from centre half back. That's amazing Gallagher went down behind the play the ball must have been 100 metres away Dalwin the big Ruckman 24 years of age and playing in his 48th game and it's the grand final, he gets it across towards Taylor to Teal, back to Taylor Taylor put to the ground Ross Aegis in there, ran into trouble but got it well, he scooped it in actual fact or so, and umpire Peter Mead was right on the scene, and that was a good interpretation by me because he's Aish had his back to me. Good umpire, Bruce Winter, half back flank. 
steadying kick from Winter. Nine minutes into the second quarter in the grand final, and it's Cunningham taking it over towards Ivan Eckerman. Wind pushed his opponent in the back. Doesn't matter. A just knocks it clear. Michael Taylor's there, supported superbly by Nicholson. Nicholson across to Thomas, on to Woodcock. Oh, brilliant football, Lord. On to Nicholson. Nicholson's kick up towards the goals. Ace is getting up there, but Adler's there before him. And Adler will take the mark. A magnificent movement by Norwood. Johnny Winner's uh, putting plenty in. I can tell you, umpire Foster went up and had a long word to him. I don't think Johnny Wynn's too worried. Roger Woodcock had a big word to say to Sorrell a little while ago as well. There's plenty of action here, and Norwood are doing it well. They are indeed, as Adler's coming in from the shot for goals. He's missed that one, and that was a bad mistake, really. 5-5, 3-2, Norwood on the top. There's the movement to Nicholson. He's come right down. Thomas, Woodcock... That last one was superb. Nicholson's kick was a good one. He had two Nord players to use. Aish and Adler. Aish is on the spot. Adler juggles the mark, but failed to kick the goal. The kick in by Sorrell is towards Phillips. Can't bring it down, but the umpire has paid the mark or a free kick to Danny Jenkins. Couldn't pick it up, but whatever it is, he's got it. He's on the half-forward line. Jenkins looking for a lead. Here goes Adler now. His second kick, he's still undecided what to do. Taking his time, it's on his side, kicking into the breeze. Jenkins goes for length. They fly back there and the mark is taken by Nat. Distributes well to Cunningham. Plays on, the running player is Brad Moore. Kanea, Port Adelaide build. The wingman to the half forward line. Philetic at the back of the pack. Boyd in there as well, Philetic. Trying to get it out to Aegis with a free kick to go to Adelaide. He's brought Adelaide centre half forward, who's finding it difficult to get into the game. His fifth kick coming up. Pretty lucky free kick that one. It was uh, technically a, a nudge, I suppose, but uh, kick should be harder to get in that than that in grand finals. A good kick will make the distance. It's going to be close. Evans there gets his hands to it with Stasinowski and the ball off the fingers through for one point. Port Adelaide making little impression in this quarter, kicking with the breeze at the 12-minute mark. Only two points, and they trail 3-3 to 5-5. That was a second behind to Philetic as Winter brings it back into play. And the mark or a free kick has been paid. And it will be play taken by David Arnold. Keeps it low into the wind. Coming down is Hoffner. And Peter Hoffner. Played on the youth side this year. Gets the free kick on the centre wing. That's a good kick. Looking for Evans. There's two against Evans every time. And the ball is over the line. Every time Johnny Wynn goes near the ball, the crowd goes mad. And uh, there's no doubt that Johnny Wynn's there to upset a few poor players. And he's doing a damn good job of it. Valetics there. Menzel got the crumbs. Good work. Taken by Teal. His kick towards the boundary line, looking for Gallagher. Finds that player, Nat Clifford. Clifford's been a playmaker all year in 1980 for Port Adelaide, having trouble getting into the game. Philetic, a big centre-half forward, onto Aegis. A beautiful block by Teal, and it goes out of play. 13 minutes. A lot of the Port stars can't get into it. Ebert, Clifford, Cunningham, Philetic, a lot of players down. Nat. Wind just picks up the ball and whips it away over the boundary line on the foot. 5-5 Norwood, Port Adelaide 3-3. Winter, the penalty free kick. Now going across to Stasinowski. In the back pocket. The Norwood full back, taking his time. Comes Grandstand's side. Walker, win over the top, takes a fine mark. 2-8 is his known nickname, obviously from his number. Transfer is played to Menzel at centre wing. Albie Menzel. Fourth kick, not a good one. Smothered off the boot by Phillips, and it's out of play at the interchange gates. Throw in, centre wing. Nat. Taylor comes over the top. Nat. 
win. Obviously, playing a loose man in defence or maybe having a run on the ball. Gallagher back to Menzel. Does it beautifully as he crashes the back, but he can't pick the ball up cleanly. Back to Taylor. Taylor to the half forward line. Sorrell sets himself. Dower there as well. In comes quickly Turbull. Woodcock. Woodcock here on the left leg around the corner to Adler. Doesn't want to play on. Turbull makes the break. But Adler says, hold it. I'm going back to kick in long. Yeah, I think he should have gone. He needed those yards. Should be a miracle shot if he kicks this one. 45 metres out. About a 60 degree angle. Not confident. Gallagher short. Well done. Gallagher has filled it down from the centre spot to take the mark marginally closer and certainly a better angle. His sixth kick coming back with the boot. It's going to float awfully close but just offline and the umpire rules one point. Five, six, the legs. Port Adelaide, three goals, three. What a magnificent kick for goal Philip Gallagher is too. And always be relied upon to make it very, very close. Trevor Sowell, undecided as to which way he goes. Not a good kick. Gallagher's up there, so is Williams. Here's the chance for Phillips. He's supported by Darrell Cale. Dazzling Darrell boots it down towards the half forward, looking for Aegis. Now it's Evans and Stasinowski. Evans gets away, having trouble picking it up because the pressure is intense. It's on the ground. Out it comes to Clifford. Clifford having a look at the goals and could have easily hand passed it to Boyd, but elected to kick for goal, one behind. If they come off, they're successful. If they don't, it's hopeless. 5 6 Norwood, Port Adelaide 3 4 in Aiken. Uh, Clifford should have moved that one over, and uh, Port Adelaide still making a lot of fundamental errors. Peter Marker, the leg certainly putting on the pressure in the Port Adelaide attacking area. They're doing it well at the moment. Jenkins tackled by Clifford. Armour centimetres inside the line. No, just out. A little bit of a tater tape behind the pack. Umpire Mead speaking with Jenkins and Clifford, the two number threes. A throw in. Walker and Dolan trying to break his way through with Stemper. Not a good handball. Kinnear hoofs it high, starting to float with the breeze. Aegis getting underneath it. Good mark. He gets a lead short on the half forward line from Kale. Cliff is going to be there as well, but it's kind of his mark taken by Bruce Brennan. Intercepted, read it well, and has taken it 30 metres out from his goal. Bruce Ritter to put the legs out of defence, coming grandstand side. Nice looking drop punt. Dolan, win. Turbo at the back of the pack. Jenkins under pressure from Kinnear. Turbo butters up again. Can't get the kick away. Kinnear around the corner to the vacant half forward line. And there's the mark. Is taken by Abernethy. All wanted to play on. Lost his footing. Put Clifford under pressure. Nowhere to go. Puts out a short pass, but that's vacant land. Coming through strongly now is Bradmore, I think, up from defence. Hooks around the corner. Going in for a goal, I think. Touch one on the line. Port Adelaide so frustrated in an attack that their back pocket player has come right down ground and tried to kick a major. One point to Bradmore, Port Adelaide 3-5, Norwood 5-6. Winter again, he can play. Nolan up there, fists it away. Umpire Mead has picked out a free kick. And it's going to go Norwood's way and will be taken by Greg Turbull. Number 17 is Greg Turbull. There's John Cale looking awfully worried. He'd be a coach. He looks about 50 this afternoon. Turbull's kick. High. The wind picks it up. Dolan underneath it. Phillips is over there. Now it's Kinnear. Dishes out the hand pass to Clifford. Clifford around the corner. And that's cutting him. And that's a good mark. In between Nicholson and Winter. Little Brian Cunningham. 202 games he's played. He's the captain of Port Adelaide. He was in 1979 when Russell Ebert went to North Melbourne and he retained that captaincy in 1980. Normally a good kick for goal, but that's not a good kick. That's one behind and Port Adelaide desperately need goals. 5 6, 3 6. The Red Legs 12 points up. That tells a story in day. I, I reckon he'd kick. 999 out of a thousand of those with either foot in any conditions. Certainly ambidextrous. One of the best shots for goal in Adelaide, as Ian Aitken said. Dolan up over the top. Stemper back. Out of play. Port Adelaide desperate at the 19-minute mark. Trailing by 12 points. 
nor were doing it well. Dolan, Walker, Ebert up towards full forward, getting back Nicholson. The ball sits nicely for him. Winter, he's going to be under pressure. That was not an handful at all. Boyd tries to crash his way through. Hooks the ball back towards full forward. Evans and Stasinowski. The bounce favours Ages. And Port Adelaide moved now to 4-6, trailing Norwood 5-6. Well, Port couldn't get them in uh, with orthodox methods. They needed a bit of a, a bit of luck. And there it was. Incredible bounce. Ross Ages was there and kicked the goal. Scores Norwood 5-6, Port Adelaide 4-6. As the ball is back in the centre with umpire me. Dolan and Clifford takes it out. Tackle and that would have hurt and did it indeed. Stephen Clifford. Stephen's Clifford kick goes up towards the square and there's a good mark, clearly taken by Frank Stink. There's plenty of Norwood players running out towards the wing now, and one of them is Michael Taylor, and that's the way it goes. The skipper's got it. Away he goes. That's his 11th kick. Eckerman to Ace. What a game Ace has played. Michael Ace. Kicks over to Adler. There's a good mark taken by Adler. John Wynn directing traffic. Ace plays attention to it. Dolan's up there. Dolan couldn't take the mark, but Albie Menzel can. He's booted one so far. He can't gather it in. Rotsky's over there, so is Eckerman, and Ace goes in a little too high, and Ivan Eckerman will take the free kick. Strongly built player is Eckerman, and a darn good footballer. Darrell Cale on the half-back flank for Port Adelaide. Kinnear is running loose, and that's the way it goes. Thomas is over there, and there's a good mark taken back there by Winter. Winter's kick forward, finds Sorotsky. Sorotsky on the right half-forward flank. A long, long way from home, and the breeze really stops that. And there's a good mark taken by Tony Hammond. Ebert at centre half back. The Port Adelaide player kicks long, but doesn't lift his eyes. Directs it straight at Turbo. Tries to crash the tackle. It's gone for holding the ball. A brilliant tackle applied by Mark Williams. They don't tackle much better than Mark Williams, Ian. The Norwood Rover very tough, but on that occasion he found Williams tougher from midfield. Kicks long, Evans charges out to meet the ball, gets up high, and I think he's come out with the ball, but it's not played. Stefanowski over the top, has his teal, loping to it, Winter in the back pocket, but he'll be content to see it go across the line and out of play. Tim Evans is going to find it very, very hard to kick goals today. He's got one so far, but every time he jumps, there's two or three that go with him. Walker, Philetic, puts in the nudge, Walker's free kick. One goal the difference in the 1980 Grand Final. 23 minutes into the second quarter. Big Dolan numbers, under certain what to do. Goes back towards the half four line, not well directed. Sorotsky comes in for the legs and takes the mark. Taylor provides the run, but he chooses Nicholson, runs him into trouble. Great tackle. Oh, it's too high. Nicholson fortunately get out of that run. The tackle from Kinnear, a little clumsy. Nicholson, Jenkins. At centre wing, the legs go forward to their half-forward line. Radmore back there, Hoffman and Adler comes across and takes the mark. Paul Adler, and I don't know Peter Marker, but I reckon the port legs aren't as, as crisp as the Norwood players. That's off the ground. Here's the charge now for Phillips. A long hand pass clear. Peter Hoffman, well played. Got it across to Ebert. Ebert in towards Williams. And the courage of Williams is undisputed. Plays on immediately. Forward, and Falletic gets that perfectly. I think he's a little surprised, but pretty happy that it's landed in his arms. The goal here would equal even the score. They trail by eight behinds that quarter time. 
They've trailed by six at the moment. As Milan Philetics kick really is atrocious. There's no other way to describe it. That's amazing, Ian Aitken. They're making every mistake in the book. But at the moment, only six points down, and uh, a couple of quick ones could change the course of the game. But at the moment, they don't look like it. The nerves. Evans is there. Towards the boundary line goes the ball. It is out of play, and uh, Port Adelaide having greater trouble settling down than Norwood. And it was reported in the local news this morning that uh, Norwood had nothing to lose and Port Adelaide had everything to lose. Well, if you lose the grand final, if you lost the year, haven't you? As Cunningham comes around the corner, brings it over towards centre half forward. Williams is up there, so is Teal. There are more Norwood players at the fall of the ball. Williams over there. Boyd pushed in the back. Umpire Foster disagrees. And now the umpire lets the play go on. Strong, hard passage of play. And it's Stemper. Pats it towards the line. The umpire has picked out a free kick. And it looks like it's going to favour Brian Cunningham. Let's see what he can do with this now. Unlucky Stemper on that occasion. Appeared to handball the ball away, but the umpire makes a decision. There's no way known you can change it. So off the 35 metre mark, the kick from Cunningham goes up towards the line, and that's his second behind. The difference is five points. Norwood 5-6, Port Adelaide 4 goals 7. Into time on by a minute in the second quarter. Winter. Looking for the lead. He gets one from Sorotsky and Jenkins' grandstand side. The side he chooses. Walker will be there as well. Dolan up over the top. Quickly in defence is Michael Taylor playing a brilliant game. Jenkins slips it back to Michael Taylor in the run two. Puts Mother off the boot. Taylor goes in again. Tremendous courage. Tap back towards Jenkins. Can't control the ball. And it's out of play on the half forward right flank for the make -point. Michael Taylor saying to Peter Mead that he was tripped and uh, I think he's right. Walker and Dolan. Walker comes out with the ball. Does it well towards Menz and he gets the bad bounce. Clifton shoots it back to the half forward line but there it's Stemper having a fine game for the legs. Takes yet another mark in defence. It's his 11th kick. 6th mark. Stemper floats one towards centre wing. Adler makes a juggling effort of it, but does it well. Gee, he's uh, well out from his full forward. He's on the half-back line at the moment. The kick is not a good one. Standing up in the breeze. Menzel almost. Dolan in there. So too is Doward. Winding his way through. Cunningham couldn't get clear. He's back in the action again at the bottom of the pack. And the umpire will come in and sort out the arms and legs and bounce. Yeah, Johnny went at full forward, and uh, Paul Adler has come out to centre-half forward. Half forward flank. Taken by Ash. Either left or right foot, it makes no difference to that player. The action's with John Wynn, Trevor Sorrell, Greg Phillips, Hannon, Roger Woodcock. Taps it across for Turbull. Eckerman used his body beautifully for Hoffler to take possession and kicking towards the centre position, looking for Boyd. Stemper, it bounces favourably for Boyd. On it goes to Darrell Cale. Puts it out the front for Evans. Over the top of the head it goes. Aegis is streaking in. Down it goes. Here's the chance for Evans. And I think it's gone through. The umpire's there. He's pulled it up. And Port have hit the front. That's the second to Evans. Port 5-7. The siren's gone. 5-7 to 5 goals. 6 at half time. 37 to 36. At the scene from our helicopter. What a magnificent sight, Peter Marker. Certainly is in day, and uh, the tension is fever pitch at the moment because I think the crowd is a little bit stunned about Norwood's performance. The second half of the 1980 Grand Final, Port Adelaide 5 7, Norwood 5 6. Your commentator, Ian Aitken. Half the game left for one to win or one to lose, and it's Thomas going to the ground. Gallagher boots towards the half forward flank, taken by Hoffner. Hoffner's kick towards centre wing, getting underneath it and taking it as David Arnold. Number six is David Armour. The 13 stone seven frame boots it down towards centre half forward, but it's a mark to Hannon. A short kick over and finds his teammate in Ian Bradmore. Bradmore close to the boundary line, age is quite content to fist it there. 
I would think that Port Adelaide players would be a little bit nervy at the moment as the ball comes back into play. Nat got the tap, a nice one too, taken by Ebert. Ebert's kicked down towards Falatic and that's a nice mark. Ian Aitken, the interesting thing is Port Adelaide has got their champion full forward, Tim Evans, on the bench. As we look at the ball go in towards that area, streaking back there is Winter. Clifford looks as though he's down in that position, tackling now. And in actual fact, according to the umpire, he has pushed Bruce Winter in the back. Yes, Tim Evans, who broke the record this year, is on the bench at the moment. That's the eighth kick from Winter, and it finds Turbull. Umpire Foster is awarded a 15-metre penalty, and it's a pretty handsome one too, Peter. I wouldn't mind betting that uh, Tim Evans would be back on the, on the field in the last quarter when Port have got the win. The kick goes straight in towards the centre position, and Grant Dalwood takes the mark. His kick towards centre half forward. Back there is Eckerman, and a nicely judged mark by Ivan Eckerman. 15 metres, and there's Tim Evans right there, the big fella. But at the moment, it's live on the centre wing. Boyd, clever football. He'll support himself over to Kania. As they did in the first quarter, they're starting very well. Misjudged mark taken by Frank Stemper. Left arm heavily strapped. Out towards centre wing looking for Taylor. The captain of Norwood has played very good football. Over to Turbull. Turbull tackle. Turbull to his feet. And once again, it's Michael Taylor. Very close to best man on the ground. Hannon, Adler, perfect turn, under Menzel, the little rover has a look at the goals, but this one's high, wide and handsome, and will go through for one behind. The scores are level at the moment, 5-7, five, 5-7. Seven, five, seven. Port Adelaide is going to have to find some run from somewhere, Norwood showing them how to do it at the moment, an important quarter for Norwood, their last with the breeze of course, Sorrell, Dowood, Abernethy over the top, in defence, Hannon for Port Adelaide. Brad Moore waits for the handball. It's not a good one. And it goes out of play. A throw in inside Norwood's half-forward flank. Over the top came win, but it's Cunningham defence. Once again, the handball ineffective. Thomas around the corner. All Port Adelaide back there. Brad Moore can't take it. Made a mistake. Oh, beautiful hand. in that one. Michael Ace is no doubt very pleased that that ball just got over fingertips. There goes the ball forward. There was no one at full forward for Norwood. Completely empty. Turbo ran in, spun around. The handball went over the top. Just cleared the fingertips of Sorrell. And Michael Ace made a certainty of it. Brilliant football. Norwood 6-7, Port 5-7. Back live as the ball is taken out of the centre again by John Wynn. It's taken and short by Jenkins. Ball with Gert to get forward. Here's another goal. Gallagher has a look at the goals. He doesn't miss those, but he has on that occasion. One behind to that player. Ball with six goals, eight. Port, five, seven. This is that uh, third quarter again for Norwood. They've started well, extremely well. And as in Aiken called, uh, you could mortgage a house on that when Philip Gallagher gets it from that position. He, he would never, ever miss. He did. And uh, Norwood will rue the day for that one. There's Neil Baum, and uh, he would love that one to have been a goal. Norwood 6 8, Port 5 7. Sorrell's kick in. Nat's going to be a leaper. Can't complete it. Under pressure. The handball to Williams. Hannon. Abernethy. Ball gets a bad bounce. In goes Turbill. Courage galore at the bottom of the pack, and the umpire will come in for the bounce. Five minutes into the third quarter. Norwood by seven points. John Wynn, 28, ambles into the scene. He'll use his body. In actual fact, flies for it with Doward. Ebert under pressure. Great tackle. Ball to play on. Hannon can't get clear. Taylor. Thomas. But once again, the umpire will come in for a bounce. And it's tough football out there. What well, they don't look too good to me either. Norwood are attacking the ball at ankle level extremely well. And I reckon Johnny Wynn's got a couple of them for it. Nat is eight. Dowell one over the top, down to Gallagher. Too slow to get rid of the ball. And the free kick will go the way of halfback flanker Tony Hatt. John Wynn using his strength in there, but it's going to be taken by Tony Hannon. 
short kick from that player. Hoffner's got away. Hoffner's got Eckerman there. That's good creative football. Eckerman down towards centre half forward. Boyd underneath it. Winter over the top. Beautiful mark. And I'm seeing Bruce Winter play a terrific game of football this afternoon. As I'm sure you all are. This is his tenth kick towards centre half forward. And Greg Phillips, who started so well in the first quarter, now has got the mark. Plays on. Tackled by Winter. Now it's Phillips on to Cunningham. Down towards centre half forward. And Spasinowski playing the game of his life. Strong mark from the big fella. Plays on. Nat Aish. Well done, Nat. Held his balance well. On to the brilliant Bruce Abernethy. Got a player coming at him. He's covered plenty of distance. Short kick, Nicholson. On to Teal. Williams straight into him. Ball on the ground, Michael Taylor over the top of Williams and the ten and a half forward umpire Peter Mead will bounce the ball. Six goals, 8.44 is Norwood, Port Adelaide 5, 7, 37. Seven minutes gone in the third quarter of the grand final. Clifford tackled high, but holding the ball too long. And Clifford pulled to the ground and the free kick will go Michael Taylor's way. A bit unlucky, he was, uh, he was tackled too high. And in that position, you should play it on. There were two mistakes made, and this is kick number 15. Coming up for North Captain Michael Taylor. Johnny Cale there, telling the runner what to do. Keith Thomas. Number seven for Norwood is Keith Thomas. Five, ten and a half, eleven to 19 years of age and playing in his 26th game, and that kick has gone the way of Chris Nat of Port Adelaide. The big fella playing in his 173rd game towards half forward. The man in front is none other than Grant Dalwood. Dalwood to take the mark, 15 metres against for Lettick. And Dalwood takes the ball clear now. A good, strong kick. Nat there, Nat was pushed in the back. The umpire didn't see it that way. Brad Moore. Oh, beautiful block by Turbo. Menzel. Now's the chance for Ebert. Ebert's short kick is just over the top of Boyle. Cunningham. Can't take it. In there is Wynn. Good, beautiful hand pass by Armour to Menzel, who sets sail for home towards Walker. There are three Norwood players down there. If they get out of it, Port Adelaide, they'll be lucky. They're lucky. Bad mistake, Norwood. Three players there, and uh, they all stood there and looked at each other. A so bounce down on the edge of the square, Peter Marker. One of them could have picked it up, Ian. What do you think? Well, I think that Port Adelaide has got very little endeavour at the moment and they're going to be struggling to win this game. Norwood looked the goods at the moment. But there's a long time to go in the grand final. We're eight and a half, nine minutes into this third quarter. Six, eight to five, seven. Port Adelaide certainly can't develop their running style. Norwood won't let them find defensive football. Sorrell to the running Kale. Defends to the outer side, no one there at all for the Magpies, and he's forced to go for the safety of the line. Jenkins overruns it. Dowood, Michael Taylor, the legs into attack again, long up towards full forward at the back of the pack. A free kick? No, it's called the play on. Bradmore overruns it. Terrible. Menzel tries to crash through, working hard for the ball. Intercepting is Abernethy, the Port Adelaide wingman, down in defence. Goes across goal to the outer side. Big leap by Dalwood. Not good. Jenkins. The running player is Taylor. He wants backup support. The handball is still not good. Walker. Adler. Crashes his way clear. He's on an angle. Chips away with the left leg, but smothered off the boot. And Sorrell carts the ball out of play. Very tight football. A low scoring grand final. A throw in adjacent to the behind post. Win 28. Nat 8. Walker, 38, thumps it over the top. Bradmore in defence from Sorrell. Gives the run to Abernethy. Can't keep it in play. Certainly little method in the game. A lot of stop-start stop start football. 6-8 Norwood, 5-7 Port Adelaide. It's not pretty football, there's no doubt about that. But really our grand finals, pretty plain. Ebert to Abernethy. It's tight, it's tense and it's tough. Teal, Faletic. Faletic kicks it off the ground. Down towards Dolan. Clifford's across there. So is Stemper. Clifford's got it now. Over it goes to Williams. Williams in trouble and had 
his head pulled off his shoulders. And the tough, gritty centre man will take the free kick. Every time Norwood tackle, they, they hurt a Port Adelaide player, and that's something Port isn't doing. 114 games this lad has played. Down towards a half forward flank. Dolan tapped it on. Stasinowski back there. A rare mistake. Can Folletic capitalise on it? The big strength of Jim Teal is there to help. And that's dropping the ball surely. No umpire Peter Bede. Who's umpiring in his fifth grand final. Will bounce the ball. 50,000 plus. It's a sellout here at Football Park. As the streamers come onto the ground. Clifford. Gets the kick to. Forward. Aegis. Step us across there. Aegis there. So and Nicholson. And Bruce Winter, number 22, running across the possession for Norwood. He has it. He plays on down towards Jenkins. The ball stands up nicely for him. He fists it forward. Adler's across and he dropped the ball. And the umpire says no. No, it too short. How did you see it, Peter Markey? Well, I think Norwood are getting the breaks at the moment, Ian. They certainly are, as the kick from Adler goes forward and it's been marked by Greg Phillips. On to Daryl Cale. On to Brian Cunningham. Back to Daryl Cale. The green keeper for Glenel goes to down towards the centre full forward position. Dolan's up there. And the kick is relieved by Winter. Abernethy. Brilliant boots around the corner. By word, they need him to do something now. And it's Winter taking the mark in the last line of defence. Bruce Winter returns the ball to the half, the half back line. Not a good one. Abernethy takes a good mark, also takes a thump. Now, I would have thought that that would have been 15 metres, but perhaps that doesn't happen in grand finals. Step and the doing it all the day. In. They're doing it all day and they're getting away with it. You play to the whistle, Peter. Abernethy's 11th kick going in towards full forward. They seem to have little to fire out up there. Ages at the back of the pack. Angle shoots. I think he's got another one. Oh, what a goal! Magnificent effort. That's his third goal. Ross Aegis, really at his brilliant best, went on an angle as he hooked it back over the shoulder and Port Adelaide pegged back now 6-7, trail Norwood 6-8. Did they ever need that one? Port Adelaide in a lot of trouble. It was a mistake from Winter actually, kicking to Abernethy. Abernethy kicked forward and this man is hungry for goals. He kicked one like that in the first quarter, he's done it again. Quarterback in business, 6-7, trailing Norwood 6-8. Of Port Adelaide supporters applaud that decision. Match kick down towards a half forward and Folletic getting away from Teal. The kick from Folletic out the front again and Dolan's taken the mark. And Port Adelaide starting to play with a bit of authority. They certainly have in the last three or four minutes. Kick from Dolan up on the ground, coming away with it as Boyd. He can kick him from there. But it wouldn't come back on this occasion for him or Port Adelaide and through for one behind. Number 14 there, Gregory Boyd. So the scores are locked again. You couldn't get it any tighter in the grand final. 6 8 apiece. Port Adelaide falling down badly at full forward, as Ian Day has mentioned. Tim Evans off the field, and they're falling down badly in front of goals. Nicholson, centre wing. Stazanowski's out there at the moment. He's dragged back. We'll get the free kick. And the umpire will force him to come back and kick over the mark. Stazanowski, fine game, has seen the removal of Tim Evans. We're not sure why. Maybe he's injured. But certainly un unusual to have a man who's kicked 145 goals for the season sitting on the bench. Seventh kick to Stazanowski. Phillips drops an easy mark for him. Adler. In there was Bradmore. And umpire Peter Mead calls for a bounce. Six, eight. Both teams, 15 minutes in portion of the large crowd 50,000 plus Nat over the top taps it down towards Clifford but it's Kale who takes it away towards Bradmore having trouble picking it up that's Hoffman and a free kick goes to Port Adelaide's Peter Hoffman a tired sign one sock down maybe cramp forming Directs play towards Nat, who does it well. Cunningham provides the run, but the Port Adelaide Ruckman forced the play on. Now he's under pressure. Well tackled. Norwood again through their skipper, Taylor. Gallagher, a long kick in towards Walker. So right there, goes for the thump away and fists the ball out of play. 
Right half forward flat. Forward capitalised on that mistake from Chris Nat. 6-8 apiece, 15 minutes into the third quarter of the grand final in 1980. Football Park, Slovenia, and it's in a magnificent condition as wind went up there. Clifford over towards Darrell Kale. Aish showing superior speed and skill at this occasion, forces the ball out of play. Magnificent run home Norwood have had. They've won nine of their last ten games, but that's a lovely palm down from that, taken by Hannon, superbly picked up by Cunningham. Cunningham's kick forward over the top. It was brilliant play by Aegis. Jimmy Teal's there. Hats towards the line, and he's out of play. Down the umpire slow to pick that up. Teal in there. A little bit of pushing and shoving. Aegis will get a free kick, as you saw. And that was foolish. From the Norwood point of view. The kick from Aegis, close to the boundary line, and Philetic takes it. Empire Foster calling Big Jim back. And Milan Folletti. 6-3, 13-7 and playing in his 57th game for Port Adelaide. Was recruited from West Torrens. And is a spectacular footballer. Towards centre-half forward, it's all Norwood. And it's Bruce Gooder playing the best game I've ever seen him play. From centre-half back, he's been a rock. He's had an indifferent season. But it's certainly playing good football now. But that's a Port Adelaide mark and it's brilliant Bruce Abernethy. One of the brilliant footballers. And Ross A just very, very slowly picking that ball up. And that's not a good sign. Over the top. A good, strong mark. And it sticks Dolan, who played so superbly in the 1979 Grand Final. They need a big one. Let's have a look at that on the replay. Keep your eye on number 29. There he goes. Pulls it into the chest. And the big fella has got the opportunity. Only 22 years of age and given a clearance from Norwood to Port Adelaide. That's a strong kick as that breeze calmed a little. It's still in play. Oh, magnificent shot for goal by Ebert, but one behind. Norwood are letting things slip a little bit. 6-9 uh, Port, Norwood 6-8. 18 minutes in, Port have got the win in the last quarter and uh, Norwood would need to be, I think, a couple in front of three-quarter time here. It's still pretty brisk, Peter. I'd agree with you. I think Neil Barn would like more than that. Winter towards Dowood. The big fellow does well on the half-back line. Jenkins provides the run. That's the way the ball go. Gee, if it's it for him, they're in business. Phillips is coming to meet him. Could be a dead heat. Jenkins goes for the thump away, but it's straight back to Hoff. And the dasher is off. Can this fellow ever run? Hoffner with the left foot to the half forward line. Cunningham's going to be a leaper. Can't bring it down. Arbor. A just comes out with it. The kick's high, wide, and handsome. Not good. Standing his ground and taking it well. Will not play. From a Clifford. The umpire rules. A bounce down. Obviously didn't think it went 15 metres. And the bounce bound will take place midfield. 6 8 to 6 9. Port Adelaide by a point. Turbo. Gallagher. The handball is not good. Cunningham, Turbill in again. Cunningham, the two Rovers in opposition. Slips out a handball. Woodcock gives away the free kick. And it's Darrell Cale for Port Adelaide at centre-half back to put the Maggies out to centre wing. He goes long, out looking for Mark Williams. Ace there with him. Jenkins. In goes Clifford. Ace. Clifford comes out with the ball, but in the meantime, the umpire has whistled up. And a free kick will go to Michael Ace on the half forward left flank, almost out to centre wing. Bit of dis discipline shown there by Stephen Clifford, who thought on a couple of occasions about biffing the opponents, but decided against it. The ball's on the right half forward, the left half forward flank for Port Adelaide, for Norwood, and the free kick will favour Port Adelaide's defender, Ian Bradmore, number 30, in the black and white Guernsey. At the 20 minute mark of the third quarter, the score reads Port Adelaide six goals, nine to Norwood, six goals, eight. They've only lost two games in 1980 at Port Adelaide. They drew one against Central Districts and they're looking in a little bit of trouble at the moment. Though, in this quarter, they're playing a little more firmly, Peter. They certainly are, Ian, and uh, Norwood has, has got a little bit untidy, I think. They should have kicked goals and haven't. 
Hoffman's across there, now it's Taylor. Taylor's kick further down ground. Number two is Darrell Kale for Port Adelaide, and the ball is out of play. Sticks Dolan charges into the back of uh, Walker, Phillips over the top and thumped it towards the line. And I would think that they'd be fairly content to do that too. Down. Hannon appeared to be tackled without possession of the ball. And Hannon takes the mark, takes the free kick. It's not pretty football now by any means. Hannon's kick towards centre wing. Aegis over the top. Right across the outer side of the oval. And it is a long way here at Football Park, this magnificent arena. Newport 6-9 and Norwood 6-8 in. If Norwood don't get a couple before three-quarter time, I think they could be in strife. Walker coming off and Dunstan going on as the ball comes clear. Hoffner, Cunningham, forced to the ground, picked up by Phillips, smothered, blocked, everything. Pushing, scratching, shoving, and Michael Taylor will take the free kick. They've had to come. This is his 18th kick, is Michael Taylor's. It's a good one, too, as it goes right towards the square. Ivan Eckerman back there. The back pocket player who's had a magnificent season in 1980. Hasn't done a lot this afternoon. Found it difficult to get into the game. But what he's done, he's done quite well. A point the difference. Port Adelaide desperately holding on. Dolan. And a free kick goes which way? Going to Norwood. Looks like it's Johnny Wynn. Right in front. And he looks a fairly tired type of a footballer, does Johnny Wynn. Number 28, there he is, bending over. And very few players that even would, would even contemplate playing with the injuries he's carrying. He's got plenty of courage, there's no doubt about that. And umpire Foster. Giving a 15-metre penalty. And that's not good football from Port Adelaide's point of view. And their heads are hanging a little at the moment. Being out-bluffed and out-fought fought by John Wynn. That's his first. And Norwood move along to seven goals, eight. Port Adelaide, six goals, nine. You called... Uh Johnny went out bluffing him, you're dead right in. He has completely put the wind up a few Port Adelaide players today. He's bluffed them. And uh, I think more importantly, he's played pretty well. He's put the body in. He's taken a few telling marks. And uh, that's a pretty useful goal, 23 minutes into the, uh, the third quarter. 7-8 Norwood, leading Port Adelaide by five points. Port Adelaide, six goal, nine. At the centre bounce, it's Menzel again. Gallagher smothered by Ebert. A chance now for Nicholson playing up around midfield. Hooks a long one around the corner. A crowd of 54,870 witnessing the 1980 Grand Final. Jim Tills at centre-half forward in. I just picked that one up and it uh, looks like Johnny Wynn, I think, is further forward than that. Perhaps at full forward. At the throw-in, Menzel. Woodcock against the tide. Can't find the ball. Ebert gets it out to Abernethy having trouble on the half-back line. Hooks around the corner. Setting himself as armour, the only one who flies, and Port Adelaide don't appear to want the ball that badly. And Armour has taken the mark at centre wing. The leg's going to attack with a long floating kick. Turbo will be one leaper. Woodcock in front. Taylor, fisted away by Hannon. Cunningham under pressure. Eckerman and Gallagher. And Eckerman, number four, takes the ball across the line. It's developed into a real hard slot. No beg your pardons. Five points the difference in the grand final as we hit the time on mark of the third quarter. Cunningham, thump further forward now, back towards centre wing. Dowen gets his boot to the ball at the half forward line. Jenkins can't handle it. Back in defence. It is Phillips. A great handball over to Sorrell. Port Adelaide running it out. Palmer Clifford will go for a dash. He's had three bounces. Chipped out the pass. Boyd is well clear. The danger signal's up for Norwood now. Boyd can't get it the first grab. Gets around, he's 30 metres out, heads for home, chips it through, and he's off line. Oh, what an opportunity, went begging a brilliant rebound effort for Port Adelaide, and Boyd couldn't handle it inside the distance. Peter Marker. Incredible, Ian, they needed it, and uh, that could have been a grand final winning performance if they got that one. 
Buxton's kick goes down towards centre half. Oh, what a beautiful mark to Greg Phillips. Over the top, the big fella went. Have a look at this. Six foot two, 14 stone three, and that's a freak mark. This is his eighth kick. Finds Cunningham. Brian Cunningham. It's hot out there. The temperature up around 26 degrees. Ebert taken by Cunningham, by Kale. A beautiful kick out to Kinnear. A slick little ringman has a look at home, kicks down towards the centre half forward, and Bruce Winter is upset by Nat, but the free kick goes or the mark goes to Winter. Fortune favours the Brave. He's played a superb game this afternoon. That's a good gutsy little mark taken by Danny Jenkins. Danny Jenkins on the centre wing, 50 to 46, which is seven goals, eight for Norwood, six goals, ten to Port Adelaide. Men's tackled by Clifford, put to the ground. The umpire calls play on. That's a good decision. Straight down the throat of Bucky Cunningham goes the kick from Darrell Kale. Another short little kick forward finds Peter Hoffner. Hoffner always keen to play on. Forward to Nat. Intercepting a Stemper. Congratulations, Stemper. That's tremendous football. On to Dalwood. On to Dunstan. Pressure of Norwood this afternoon. Superb. Up over the top was Dolan. Turbo to ground. Cunningham, Menzel, Bradmore, Phillips. Umpire. Bounce down. Conditions are telling. Both sides have slowed down a lot. But the game is delicately balanced. Norwood only four points up. I think the wind's dropped a little bit, but I think they need a couple break at three-quarter time. I'd agree, Peter. The fitter side's going to win this one. Port Adelaide, the fresher of the two, having played only two games in the last month. But Norwood certainly match hard. 7-8 to 6-10, four points the difference. Almost three-quarter time in the 80 grand final. Dolan and win. Williams around the corner. The bounce goes against Doward. Thumped cleverly by Boyd. A chance for Port Adelaide. Ganeer slides up beautifully. Gets out a handball. Going back to get it for Lenick. He's 30 metres out. They're going to have another pop at the big white ones, but they've missed again. Offline, Port Adelaide setting up the opportunities. Brilliant down the outer side, but they just cannot convert from within the distance. There's no doubt, Ian Day, that goals can be scored at that southern end, and uh, Norwood will have a chance, of course, of kicking him in the last quarter. Winter takes the mark from the, fr the kick in from Stazanowski, and now it's Stemper. Stemper with a beautiful pass across to Turbull. Turbull down towards the right full forward pocket looking for Woodcock. Eckerman was there. Bradmore, Menzel, shepherding by Adler, and the ball is carted out of play by Tony Hannon. The land for Lenick has had three shots for goals this afternoon and has kicked three behinds. Ball back in the play. Tap down. Eckerman, too high was the tackle. And Ivan Eckerman comes out and goes down. That's Ivan Eckerman, number four. Umpires don't want to know about it. Uh, normally when there's a high tackle, the free kick follows, but not today. Dolan and Phillips and Ebert. Handballs backwards. And quite content to take it through as Ian Bradmore. And the score's so hard to get this afternoon, one would wonder about the wisdom of that. Dangerous practice, I would think, in a low-scoring grand final. And there's the siren. The third quarter here at Football Park has ended. There's a little bit of a jostle going on. Dunstan having a few words with the Port Adelaide counterpart in Darrell Kale. But the siren has gone at three-quarter time in the 1980 grand final. Norwood 7-9-51 lead Port Adelaide 6-11-47. The roar is enormous and your commentator is Ian Dunn. This is it, the last quarter in 1980. against Doward. Doward hooks the ball back over looking for Turbull, but it's thumped forward by Ebert to Philetic. Port Adelaide on the half forward line. Philetic wants help. The handball is wild. Winter gets back. Mark Williams a chance to get them off to a great start. Hooks in towards the goal, but it just floats off line at the last moment. As Peter Marcus said, some tired legs out there. Look at the socks down. Many of them obviously going to have troubles with cramp in this last quarter. A 27 degree heat. And a tough grand final. It's amazing. Dunstan at full back and uh, Clifford at full fourth for Port Adelaide. The kick from Dunstan comes towards a half back flank. 
up there was Dalton. Couldn't take the mark. Dolan floated, faltered in his stride. Brings the player to the ground. And the player is Bruce Winter. One of Norwood's best. Socks down around his ankles. This is his 15th kick. Centre wing, out of play. A minute gone. Chris Nat, number eight. Had to work hard, the big fella, this afternoon. Dalwood, on to Williams. Nat again to Cunningham. Out to Williams again. That's one player that'll never toss the towel. Kinnear, Faletic. Faletic appeared to be held without possession. And showing the ball. Palmer, got to hit him with a clenched fist. Turbill took it away. A hand pass forward to Dalwood. On it goes to Aish. On it goes to Woodcock. Possession football. Woodcock's kicked down towards the full forward position. And Adler fists it away, but he interfered with Bradmore. And Bradmore will take the free kick. Jim Till still at centre half forward for Norwood. Stemp is at uh, centre half back on Philetic. And uh, Johnny Wynn is still up forward. Ian Bradmore for Port Adelaide. A long kick back towards the half back line. Dowood got up very early. Ace back now to Turbill. To Ace in the run two. Meets out a short pass. Win in front. Can't bring it down. His body's over the ball. Cleverly to Dowood. Norwood go forward towards Menzel. He's going to be a leaper. Woodcock in the action there as well. Till comes out for the ball. Pushes it out. Woodcock hooks in towards full forward. But it's all Port Adelaide back there. And it's left to Russell Ebert to run it out of defence for Port Adelaide. Cunningham is clear midfield. But he's going over that player's head. Kinnear. Port Adelaide into attack with two long kicks. Up towards Dolan. Full forward. Great He cut across beautifully over the top of Bruce Winter and pulled down the mark at the second grab about 15, 20 metres out and what an important kick for the Magpies. Three points down, three minutes into the final quarter. The Port Adelaide playmaker chips away, has converted, gives his first goal and Port Adelaide hit the front in the final. 7-9-51. It's incredible that a, that a kick for goal at the other end can be the mistake that brings you undone. Adler kicked for goal. It came undone. Ebert to Kinnear, who's just kicked the ball on replay. And Bomber Clifford, ex-Collingwood, takes the most important catch of his career. And he converted. Porter in front, 54 points to 51. And that's Stephen Clifford there, right alongside of Graham Dunstan. Two former Victorians. Two former Collingwood footballers as Nat gets up there. A little bit of extra life comes into those legs. Michael Taylor. What a superb game Michael Taylor has played. Abernethy down. Abernethy interfering with Norwood. Aish. Back. Well done, Bruce Abernethy. Tackled by Thomas without possession of the ball. Aish is at centre, Ian Aiken, and uh, Philip Gallagher's at half forward. Good moves from uh, Coach Barr. Nat there. Taken by Hannon, lost by that player. Hoffner. Kick high forward. Over the top. Taylor it was. Tackled. And umpire Foster will bounce again. And the speed that these players are moving with at the moment, I would think by about 25 minutes time, they'll be just about going up and down on the spot because that's about what they're doing right now. And well, they should be because it's as hot as heck and the pressure has been enormous. Michael Taylor across there. Williams. Turbull. Greg Turbull. Still got run in the legs. Took a little too long on that occasion. Thomas there. Ball to the ground. Picked up by Nicholson who's got run. Remember he had that injured shoulder. Couldn't play in the preliminary final. Seems okay this afternoon. Gallagher. His kick down towards centre half forward. Eckerman back there. In the ball comes again on replay. Eckerman kept his eye on it. Wynn was there and so was Eckerman. Now the ball is being run in towards the centre position. Looking for little Kinnear. Tim Kinnear puts distance between the boot and ball. And Stasinowski took it long enough. Valenic takes the mark. Kicks it through but the umpire has taken the mark to, to Stasinowski. And so he should because that was a tremendous performance. 
Danny Jenkins has let Kim Kinney go on two occasions, very costly. Jenkins is in a lot of trouble. He is almost out on his feet. There's no movement at all in his legs. Stasinowski, a superb game for the legs, maybe his last. Finds Albie Menzel, who's given Port Adelaide Rovers the slip. The handball over to Dust is not good. The bounce is going to tell against him. Dunstan using his body well. Menzel quickly out to the outer side now. Thomas looks for Woodcock. Eckerman again. This is when the class wins out as the chips are down. Transfers it over to E, but he's well clear midfield. Has the luxury of a couple of bounces. The Port Adelaide champion goes in long towards full forward. Stasinowski gets back. With him is Aegis. Stasa. Aegis. Can't keep the ball in play. And a throw will take place about 30 metres around from the behind post. Port Adelaide and they just look as though they've picked up a bit of momentum, perhaps enough to uh, give them an edge. Neil Baum looking for his first premiership in South Australia in his first year as coach. Armour, Aegis. Great tackle there by A. Scott for holding the ball. And we see Dunstan and Clifford, the two former VFL players, having a few well-chosen words. So long as that's all it is for the action on Michael Ace. Inside the half-back line, Norwood down by three points. A very tired-looking kick goes towards Dowood. Thought about Menzel, who gave the lead, but now he kicks to the half-forward line. Too far for two. Sorrow will be paid to push in the back. The Port Adelaide custodian up at centre wing, and he can hardly raise a gallop. In fact, there's a few out there that can't even scratch themselves are that tired. But it's Sorrell from the check side of centre wing. A long kick to the half forward line. Kale sets himself. Bumped away. Jenkins to Ace. And the youngster goes for a gallop. Crossing down the grandstand side. Brilliantly strokes the tackle. Pushes out the short pass. Not good enough. In defence, Hannon can hardly raise the legs. The bounce favours is Kinnear. Running for him is Kale. The match plays into attack again. A long kick by Kale. Up towards Aegis. Dazanowski can't handle it. Quickly back in defence. Thrown out by Armour. Too tired to get it clear. Players throw themselves on top of the ball. And old Peter Marker, it's tough work out there. It sure is. And uh, perhaps one thing the players don't realise, they're only eight minutes into the last quarter. There's still at least another 22 to go. And they're really feeling it. This is like a marathon at the moment. You've got to feel for these players. Heads are bobbing. The whistle is gone. The umpire calls play on. Michael Taylor coming clear. Four, five bounces. A long hand pass over to Woodcock. Woodcock back to Taylor. Another one on to Ace. Ace has got a kick fit down ground. Over goes Phillips. Play on. No, surely not. John Wynn will get a free kick. That was well done too, Ian Aiken. He stood his ground and uh, it was a big effort by Phillips to stop it. But 2-8. I'm amazed that he's still on his feet, but he's still an important player. He certainly is, as he kicks down towards a full forward position. Off hands it goes. Here's a chance for Darrell Carl. Over it goes to Weaver. Clifford's loose on the half-back flank, and that's the way it goes. Away goes Bruce Abernethy further afield, and that's the way it goes. Thomas will go after Abernethy. The youngster gets clear beautifully. He's still got run left. He could be a handy player in about 10 minutes' time. Up goes Philetic. Down goes Philetic. Picked up nicely. Nicholson supporting. Blocked by Kinnear. Taken again by Nicholson. After goes Kinnear. Forward goes Menzel. Support from Dunstan. Dunstan steadies and kicks further forward. And there's a good mark taken by Adler, who wisely protects himself. Adler, too far out to score. Thought about the short pass into the pocket. Had Turbill clear. 11th kick for Port Adler. Going in long. Getting back underneath the ball was Nat. Can't find it. Players stack up on the ball in the square. Too tired to get out, and the umpire will come in and bounce. Norwood badly need a goal. To give them some incentive. They're still three points down. Ten points into the final quarter. Nat number eight. Win in there to use his body. Nat comes over the top. Gets it to Kale, who can't get it clear. Hannon grab. Eckerman in for Port Adelaide. Boots and clear, back towards midfield. Michael Taylor, a brilliant performance, takes yet another mark. Has Dunstan short, a beautiful short pass. Finds that player at centre half ball. The legs, still with legs, running well. If maybe on courage. 
Dunstan too far out to score. Kicks into the man. That's not good football. Eckerman back there. Tries to get out to Ebert. Goes without the ball. Getting a kick away. Dunstan underneath the ball. Hannon. Run his teammate into trouble. Clifford. Grab. Hannon butters up again. Gives it to running Ebert. Williams it is. A long kick to the vacant half forward line. Dolan lumbers to meet the ball. Leaves it behind. The big fellow's got a chance. Philetic takes it. Needs back up support. Hooks in towards full forward. It's Cunningham. Can't get there. Will beat him through for a minor score. Oh, what tension. A point to Port Adelaide. Seven goals, 13. Norwood, 7 9. The fourth behind to Milan Philetic as Dunstan appears to have found a bit of legs. Getting away from that, but that's enough. Abernethy a free kick. Now, have a look at this. If your heart's not in your mouth, you've got no heart. Here's Neil Barn. Where's his heart? Oh, that'd be in his mouth, the same place as mine is. He's a pretty good kick for goal, Bruce Abernethy. 11th kick coming up. The kick from Abernethy is a beauty! Straight through the middle, and that's his first. The brilliant Bruce has pulled up his first. Port Adelaide up, 8 goals, 13, Norwood, 7 goals, 9 in the grand final. It was a magnificent tackle for Port Dunstan down, and uh, Dunstan's made two mistakes, a short kick a little while ago, and this one. He'll never forget that. Should have got rid of it with the hand or foot. The number 12, Bruce Abernethy, Malcolm Blight, North Melbourne coach, reckons he's got him next year. He's a good player. The moment of truth for Norwood in the 1980 season. Cunningham through, Armour in defence, in goes Williams, the body's still going in hard. Menzel, Taylor, a long kick to the half-forward line. Setting himself teal, the ball stood up in the breeze, trying to give the handball away, back towards win, dispossessed. Port Adelaide with a chance now, through Phillips, going in long. Out comes Dolan, the big fellow crashes, Clifford walks around the corner. Phillips, a big smash over the back from Stasinowski and Wilma Clifford picked it up and there's only one kick that will kick a goal from there and that was it. Brilliant work. Matt's up there, knocked out by Eber. Port Adelaide have now found legs that they haven't been there all afternoon. Down goes Darrell Kale, up comes the fourth time for Gary Medalist, back to Abernethy. Abernethy threw it away and the free kick will go the way of, of for Norwood. Aish. Down towards Thomas. And now this is a great grand final. Not that it hasn't been a great grand final right from the start of the game. But it has been hard and tough. And this is Philip Gallagher. A short propping kick over. And Norwood are working into an attacking position. Turbo from just out of the 25 metres out. It's a magnificent movement, Ian Aiken. I think the crowd... Suddenly got a bit of, a, there was a bit of a hush over the crowd because Port Adelaide looked as though they had it. But Norwood, with four clever short passes forward, put themselves in a position to get a goal. Now, Turbull very rarely misses these goals. He's an excellent kick for goal. That's his second. Great pressure, great performance and great skill. Port Adelaide, 9-13. Norwood come back, eight goals, nine. It's another magnificent tackle started that off. Michael Aish, brilliant tackle on Bruce Abernethy. And as I said, four kicks down the field, and Norwood are back in business. Ten points down, 15 minutes in, there's plenty of time for a great deal more to happen here at Football Park. Well, I said the moment of truth, well, Norwood have answered it, but they've got to continue. Matt hooks it over, Williams leaves it behind. Aish in there, throws it out to Jenkins. The legs go forward again. They haven't given this away. The kick towards Teal on the half-forward line. Watch back up support. Gets it for Menzel. Menzel to Woodcock. 30 metres out. Heads for home. And he bounces it. Oh, what a brilliant goal. The Red Legs fighting back brilliantly in the final quarter. Only four points down. 16 minutes in. And that is Woodcock's second goal. Back in business.
business. And that is for sure. Jenkins got it out with a grubber. Jim Teal went about three ways at the same time, but finally got it to Menzel. Back to Woodcock. Kick number eight. Goal number two. 16 minutes in. Four points of difference. 9-13, 9-9. And about Dan again, it's Dow with the top clear. Norwood now getting leached. Wind goes down, Taylor's there. And a beautiful block by Kenny Kinnear, and away he goes again. Down towards centre half forward. Darrell Tails across here. Ross Age has tapped it clear. They are being held. Dolan goes down in a heap of players, and umpire Foster will bounce at centre half forward. And still, Port Adelaide have not used Andy Porpusha. Fresh legs. An awkward bounce, Taylor takes it, taken by Williams, out it comes, past it goes, Boyd's got to go past one, has a look at the goals, has a kick at the goals, and Port Adelaide goes six points clear, and that's the first kick off the boot of Gregory Boyd. Brilliant reply, Port Adelaide. Michael Taylor was, uh, was in trouble with the smother, there he is, got the handball out, that's all he could do. Gregory Boyd, son of 1956 McGarry medalist, Davy Boyd, has the most important kick of his life. Brilliant work, 10-13 Port, Nord 9-9. Paul Pleasure warming up on the bench as Ian Aitken has called it. Dolan, Doward, Turbull, Jenkins, back to Turbull, run down by his own man, Judy, think he's in trouble now. Swallowed by about three or four magpies, and the umpire will come in and bounce. The worried face of Neil Barr sees his chances in 1980 slipping away 10 points down, but his charge is still going on characteristically with courage. Clifford, Kale, can't pick it up. In there is Jenkins, he can't bend over. Dunstan, Clifford, Kale around the corner towards the half forward line. Aegis gives chase. If the ball sits for him, he's in business, but it won't. And the ball goes out of play inside the half forward right flank. 10 13, Port Adelaide. Norwood 9-9, played 18 minutes. Still anybody's green fight. Nat and Doward. Stemper towards the half-back line. That's Baker at the moment. Paul Pleasure immediately in the action. All set up, Kinnear. Ducks the chuck there and uh, gets the free kick for too high. Just a little fortunate. Paul Pleasure set him up. There was an opponent right on him. And he had to play cleverly to get out of that. Kim Kinnear. 17th kick. Half forward right flank, not a lot of movement in his forward area. Kicks in Hope, up towards the half forward line. In goes Williams, the left foot kick away, good bounce through. It's a goal! A brilliant goal to Mark Williams. Never say die effort, his first goal. And Port Adelaide kicked clear again in the 1980 Grand Final. 11 goals, 13 to Norwich, 9 goals, 9. Kim Kinnear. He's beaten Danny Jenkins all day, I think. Williams around the corner. What a pressure goal. Port Adelaide again, 16 points up. 11-13 to 9-9. Oh, now it'll require a superhuman effort from Norwood to come back into this now. Dalwood's up there, tries to get it. Michael Taylor playing the game of his career. It's been a magnificent career as well. John Wynn over there having trouble with the Stephen Clifford. But it's Port Adelaide taking the ball forward. Taken by Kinnear. Down towards Cunningham and out of play. John Wynn and Stephen Clifford in uh, something that wasn't Marcus of Queensbury rules. And that's John Wynn probably playing his last game of football and it's been a magnificent career from an illustrious footballer. Nat, back palm. Armour. Armour keeps it in play. Dolan's back there. Teal. Dolan gets mixed up. Teal tackle. Now Fultz gets win and win drops the ball. Whoops! Handball, Johnny. Been around a long time, Johnny. We don't do anything silly now. Umpire Mead talking to Win, trying to calm him down. And Greg Phillips, who's played a superb game today, is taking his time as well he might. 15 metres, and what a hand from 15 metres. Phillips doesn't realise that he's got a 15 metre. The pressure is so great, 
that Phillips didn't realise 15 metres was his in favour. Up towards centre full forward. Boyd came out of the pack and Stazanowski takes the mark or the free kick. Doesn't matter which. Now it goes to Taylor, tackled by Boyd. Out towards the boundary line. Abernethy across there, but the ball is out of play. 11-13, Port Adelaide, Norwood, 9-9, live football. 79-63, to 63, 21 minutes into the last quarter of the 1980 Grand Final, and your commentator is Ian Day. Dowood in there, can't get it out. A chance for Armour to clear. Almost run down, Turbul under pressure, gets the handball away, and Michael Taylor refuses to give in. A brilliant performance by the Norwood skipper. A wonderful season for the legs, but he's looking down the barrel at the moment. Thomas's kick is off the side of his boot, but fortunately finds Danny Jenkins. The Kangaroo Island farmer slips it quickly over to his running teammate. Thomas, half forward line, a long kick in towards full forward. Adler sets himself, can't bring it down. Bail in defence. Kicks long for Port Adelaide, but it's all the legs back there. And the mark is taken back in defence by Michael Taylor yet again. The run is provided from winter, if you can call it run. Socks down. Norwood badly need a goal. Down by 16 points at the 22-minute mark. Dunstan down the outer side. In goes Paul Pleasure, the new man in. But the ball is out of play at centre wing on the outer side. A huge crowd. 54,870. Dolan, 29. Dowwood, 1. Dowwood goes in again, looks to slip out a handball. Hoffner. But it's Ebert who takes the ball away, finds Cunningham unopposed. Half forward line to Port Adelaide captain. Elects to play on. Matt Stazanowski. Yeah. A one-on-one -on -one duel. Stazza couldn't get off the ground. The Port Adelaide Ruckman stood firm with strength and took a mark 15 metres out, 45 degree angle. And this could be game set and match. Chris Nat. Kick number nine. Not a good kick at all. A tired kick off the side of his boot. One point to Port Adelaide, 11-14, Norwood 9-9. 23 minutes into the grand final quarter. If Norwood are going to do something, they must do it now. A goal, two goals, three goals immediately. Sazanowski kicks back into play. Turbul is interfered with by Clifford. Away goes the hand pass. And Darrell Carl doesn't miss him from there, but he does on this occasion. And it's now three goals, the difference. Port Adelaide, 11-15-81. Norwood, 9-9-63. Nicholson decides to run it out of full back. Kick long to Jenkins. Kinnear fisted away. Paul Pleasure. Jenkins. Oh, throws the ball back between his legs. The greatest tunnel ball act you've ever seen. The umpire pings him for holding on. He missed it. Push at the back end. Jenkins short. That's about as far as they can kick. Michael Taylor under pressure now. Dunstan. Sorts out Grant Dowwood midfield. The Redneck Ruckman zooms him into attack for the half forward line. Fine mark for Adler. Came to meet it well and he's taken the mark at centre half forward. Ace provides some run. The short pass underway and he's got it. In the full forward pocket. About 40 metres out from goal at a 60 degree angle almost kicking into the teeth of this norwesterly which has abated somewhat 19 year old michael ace once again we see a tight kick going to lob short and a fine mark has been paid in defense to greg phillips or is it soft phillips it is and what a superb performance the port adelaide center half back has put up all day his 10th kick And seventh mark. Yes, he and Michael Taylor would be the outstanding footballers this afternoon in the 1980 Grand Final. Boyd went, Abernethy went very high then. The ball is on the ground. Paul Pleach is across there. Beautiful hand pass down by Thomas Fines. Dunstan. Dunstan in towards the forward pocket looking for Adler. Gallagher running down there. Into the time on by 25 seconds. Three goals Norwood have got to get. Dare I say that it's Port Adelaide's Grand Final. Dare I not. Wind over there, Gallagher there. Ball back, Menzel, who's been something of a find in 1980, 
but on that occasion, it's Andy Porpleisha tackling very well. And there's the TS Hill Cup, flanked by two very proud South Australian National Football League officials on the ground. Nicely pulled in by Cunningham. Armour back there, still one. Williams, Darrell Kale, Stasadowski on for Dunstan. Dunstan down in towards the forward pocket. Eckerman's back there, and so is Turbo. And that's a tremendous effort by Little Turbo. Here it comes again on the replay. Turbo coming in there, all the strength of his pain ridden body up. Away he goes to Taylor, probably best man on ground. A mistake by Sorrell. Menzel back and taken by Gallagher. But I think it's just playing out time now. Gallagher in the right full forward pocket. Gallagher's kick is going across the face of goal. Teal almost trying to pick it up. Woodcock will get round on the dangerous left leg. Hooks back but not far enough. And the ball goes out of play. Yes, the sands of time running out in 1980 for the Red Legs. Down by 18 points. Phillips gets up high, thumps it away. Back towards Clifford on the half back line. Can hardly struggle, kicks it around the corner as Cramp starts the board up the muscles. But it's out of play. And once again, valuable seconds tick away for Port Adelaide. And those three finals matches that Nord have played are really telling now. At the throw in. Win trying to still put in his racked body, racked with pain. Port Adelaide to the half forward line. Winter, no one over there. G Fancy having to go chase this in the last moments of a grand final. A good 50 metre chase. It's Gallagher. Abernethy, quickly taken by Kinnear. Slip back now to Hannon. No Boyd, it was back to Hannon. Politic on the lead. Stemper, Politic, one on one. Politic comes out with the ball now. Kicks in long, kicks in high, but he's going to be offline. And Stasinowski is back there with not a Port Adelaide player within 50 metres. And the custodian elects to run once, then, then kick. Michael Taylor can't get it clear. H. Short towards centre wing, looking there for Jenkins, but Norwood can make no impression as the ball once more goes out of play. 28 minutes into the final quarter. And John Cale, yet another premiership, only seconds away. There's no doubt about that. Look at the emotion on Johnny Cale's face. As they're going to go on now, Port Adelaide, and they'll win their 21st grand final. Even though Albie Menzel and Norwood are going forward, it's all over. Eckerman's up there. Bradmore coming in hard. Turbo goes down. Teal is there. Tackle, dropping the ball. And Ivan Eckerman just pulls himself up under his feet. Magnificent game from a lot of players here today, Ian. But about Michael Taylor's performance 23 kicks 14 handballs and six marks best what a on great ground. captain performance best on ground I would think Michael Taylor John Wynn Ryan Cunningham still running with those legs of his down towards a half forward flank Stasinowski and both of them are hurt seriously Stemper Boyd now it's for Lekic. Valetic's got Abernethy at centre half forward and little Greg Nicholson, you're brilliant. Isn't that incredible? Two players so tired they didn't even notice each other's presence and uh, Bruce Winter doesn't look too flash at the moment. Thomas clears the ball out to Dunstan. Norwood won't give in, they're still running. Almost 30 minutes of the final quarter and Gallagher has the ball on the half forward right flank. Once again the socks are down. Adler on the lead, that's the way the ball will go. But there and elated coach John Cale. But the final scores here at Football Park, Port Adelaide 11 goals, 15, 81, has defeated Norwood 9-9-63. Well, Peter Marco, what do you reckon? A superb game in uh, a real grand final, a tough, hard slog all day. And uh, you must pay great testimony to that man, John Cale. What a tremendous performance. 
three grand finals he's had in his short career. There's Brian Cunningham, the captain. But what a magnificent performance by the underdogs in day. Neil Baum and, and his crew. Well, full marks to Neil Baum. Halfway through the 1980 season, it looked as though they weren't even going to participate in the final series at all. But a magnificent latter half of the season got them into fifth spot. But it's very tough to win them from there. Nobody has yet done it. And, of course, they failed, but they only failed by 18 points in the grand final. And Ian Aitken, no doubt you would like to pay tribute to the loser as well. Oh, yes, no doubt about it. I, I really do feel, feel for the Norwood side and the Norwood supporters, the players, and Neil Baum in his first year of coaching. It was superb performance. And uh, one can only win it, of course. And Port Adelaide really richly deserved their victory. They got beaten twice during the year. They drew once. And they've come out and won probably one of the toughest hardest grand finals I've ever witnessed. Peter Marker, have you ever seen players so tired at the end of the final series? You, of course, have been involved through the 70s, but, gee, they look dead out there. I, I don't think I've ever seen players more tired uh, at such an early stage in the match, Ian, that midway through the, the third quarter, a lot of them were gone, and it was testimony to a lot of, their, to a lot of the players' courage and fitness that they kept going. And Have a look at Neil Baum talking to his players. There's Grant Dalwood and Big Jim Teal. I think Barmy would be pretty happy that he came to Adelaide. A great player in uh, in Melbourne with the Richmond Club. One of the toughest players to come out of Melbourne. I think he he sat John Nichols and a couple of the big Carlton Ladies boys on their, on their backsides in the final the in the early 70s. Now for the presentation of the Thomas Seymour Hill Trophy, the president of the South Australian National Football League, Mr Max Bashir. I think you'll all agree that we've just seen one of the greatest grand finals in our time. In any, in any grand final, there can be only one victor, but I'd like to congratulate the Norwood Football Club on its wonderful performance on However, I think you'll all agree with me that Port Adelaide have been the top side all year and they thoroughly deserve the winning day. I'd like to ask Brian Cunningham to come forward to accept the Thomas Seymour Hill Trophy for the Premiership of 1980. Brian Cunningham. Max. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the game. It was a great game to play in. Uh, consolations to Norwood. They're a terrific side, a great side, and well done to them. Thanks very much. Now the big moment for the, the winning side, the lap of honour. Greg Phillips up there with his captain, Bucky Cunningham. Four times the Gary Medal winner, Russell Ebert. And what a proud moment it must be for him. 31 years of age, four medals, and still a brilliant footballer. The ultimate, the end of the season, and what a great one it was for the Magpies. Well, it certainly was, because add to the fact that they've won the grand final, Russell Ebert won the McGarry medal, and of course, Tim Evans, he broke that wonderful record that was held by Freddie Phillips. Russell Ebert, and bear in mind that Port Adelaide played the last half without their champion, Tim Evans, but full marks to Stasinowski, who kept him uh, down until that stage. And here they go for the lap of honour, but in the meantime, we'll take a break and be back shortly. Well, certainly a great grand final, Bob Hammond. Uh, Port Adelaide, the consistent side in, in 1980, but nor today, what a great performance. Well, congratulations to Port Adelaide. They, they've shown during the year what a great side they are, but yes, Norwood's performance was full of grit, full of courage, full of character, and uh, no one uh, did any more than their captain. I thought that Michael Taylor probably was best on ground. Uh, I felt that he, what, he had some 23 kicks to yes. eight marks, 
had 18 handballs. He continued to inspire his side. It was a wonderful performance. On the other side of the ledger, uh, I thought that Greg Phillips was probably uh, Port Adelaide's best player. He's a great, big, strong man, and he was eagerly sought by Collingwood. Unfortunately, they're not going to get him because Port Adelaide have <laughs> got him really tied up. Bob, where did you think the turning point of the game came? Nord came back and got within four points in the last quarter. Was it the legs? Well, I, I think that uh, they didn't possibly capitalise fully on the third.